Um, just before starting, a very, very sad day uh, for the basketball world, for the IU basketball family, uh, with the passing of uh, the legendary Coach Knight. Uh, my condolences uh, to his wife, Karen, his sons, Tim and Pat, uh, the rest of his family, and, and for all of us who, who loved him. Uh, from a personal note, I wouldn't be sitting here in front of you guys today if it wasn't for Coach Knight. Uh, so great love and respect uh, for a true legend uh, who changed the game. Uh, the uh, um, before questions, um, when it comes to trades, we've talked about this before. Um, trades suck. They're the worst part of this job. Um, not complaining about it because it's it's what we sign up for. Um, but just wanted to thank before we say anything about James or PJ. Uh, Thank Marcus Morris, Nicholas Batum, Robert Covington, KJ Martin, um, all for our quality, quality rotation, playoff, you know, performing players. Uh, each of them in, in different ways contributed in a big way to, to some of our biggest moments. Obviously, KJ just, just got here, and we, we think he has a very, very bright future. Uh, but when, when you trade players, it's, it's not just the, the players, it's the people. It's their families. It's their kids. Uh, it's all the things that they've meant to all the people uh, that they interact with daily, um, the connection they have with with our fans. So just wanted to thank them. Uh, sometimes that gets lost uh, anytime you make trades and you, you bring in, you know, big names. So just uh, – so without further ado, I turn it over to you guys. What was – why was the reasoning that got over the finish line now? Yeah, it's 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 always hard to figure out the timing. I, what I'd say is I think the beginning of the season, uh, it's one thing when you're talking in July and August and September, um, and especially, you know, for two sides to make a deal, it has to make sense for both sides. And I would just say as the season, they're really we were monitoring the situation throughout, and as it got closer to – Within you know a couple of weeks of the season, the intensity conversations turned up. Where okay, it went from there's really nothing here to okay, there could be something here. And then I think as as the season started, uh, it just made sense for for both sides. Uh, you know, um, I won't speak on Philly's perspective because that's that's their perspective. But from our standpoint, it made a lot of sense to bring James and PJ here as early as we can. Um, just so our guys can get the reps, all the reps required to be, you know, to build continuity and rhythm uh, and fit, and for T. Lou and the coaching staff to be able to experiment with different combinations. Uh, so we're extremely excited to add James and PJ, and uh, we feel we've gotten our team better. Yeah, well, I think the thing, this, unlike many other transactions that we've had, this was so public, uh, more just because of, you know, the situation between James and, and Philadelphia. So we had a lot of time to not just talk to a number of different people, but to study it and to see see how it could work, see how it could make it better, get feedback from players and coaches. Um, and we're just, you know, extremely excited that we were able to make it happen. Uh, I guess important for you guys because of the rest sometimes that Kawhi and Paul have needed in the past in this way with your big four if those guys are sitting out a game or two you've still got Russ and James now well one you know the Kawhi and PG rest thing is kind of bullshit um, th this is there's a difference between injuries and rest Kawhi and Paul last year were injured uh, these guys work extremely hard for their reputations to be impacted that, you know, people say rest or don't want to play. Like, these guys are, are the highest level competitors. They're first ballot Hall of Famers. Uh, why with James, really what we looked at was it was an opportunity to maximize Kawhi and Paul uh, and to give us the highest chance to win. Um, it's our responsibility, not just to Kawhi and Paul and to the coaching staff and to the people in the organization, but to our fans to look at every single way where we can raise our ceiling. James is a ceiling raiser. Um, the, uh, he has skill sets that will fit really, really well with our team. Um, so it w wasn't based on, okay, on days that guys are injured, because our goal 
uh, is to win our first championship in our franchise history. So it's we're only going to do that if everyone's at their best, if players sacrifice and play for each other and fit together. And ultimately, look, your stars, right? And it starts with Quine and PG. They are your ultimate ceiling raiser. So if those guys are healthy and with the addition of James and PJ, as long as Russ and the rest of our guys, uh, and giving T. Lou and the coaching staff the benefit of an entire season, um, we, we feel really, really good uh, about what we could be. It's going to take a lot of work. And going into what we said before training camp, we have to prove it. You know, we're, uh, we're, we're, you know, we're in a position where every single day we have to earn it. Lawrence, how do you envision James enhancing Russ, uh, Paul, and Kawhi, those four together? How is it going to work together? And also, when you were talking about this is an abnormal trade because it was so public, you had so much time, what kind of background or research or analytics you did to try to see how this fit would be? Yeah, uh, good question. Um, I think the, the one is there's enough examples where just on video like so when you watch you know James with you know Kyrie and KD and even though those guys maybe they played 16 games together but you saw a transformation I mean look James from a individual standpoint you think about it, he's been a scoring champ the assist champ the MVP six man of the year uh and then in Brooklyn you saw at different moments of the game what do you do it he'd be strictly a playmaker and then at times when he'd be with the second unit he was more of a scorer and then his first, well, his full year in Philly, like you saw the pride he took in making Joel Embiid, help Joel Embiid be the MVP. Plus, there are little subtle things. He, you know, he took like 1.8 catch and shoot threes a game, uh, and he shot them at, at a very, very high percentage. Uh, the one thing that's always impressed us about James, regardless of role, guys made the playoffs every single year. Uh, his winning percentage amongst active players, and especially when you pull out like the dynasties of Golden State and what LeBron and his teams have done and the San Antonio, like it, it's really, really impressive. Um, so I think we've seen how his game has evolved. You know, he's an elite passer, extremely high IQ. He's got great size. He can guard up. He guards bigger players well. Um, and I think he, like Kawhi, like Paul, like Russ, they're all at the right stages of their career where there's one common goal because these guys, they have all the individual accomplishments. They've made plenty of money. This is about one goal. And just the uniqueness of the opportunity to have four guys from Los Angeles who grew up within a couple years of each other to be able to come to a place that they want to be at and to do something that's never been done before for the Clipper organization – the pride of place, the sense of pride. Um, we see the investment every day. And then to have James and now also PJ, who's the guy that we've targeted for a number of years, to be able to come together, um, I think it's, it's another important piece to, to continue to get better, to, to come closer to trying to you know, achieve our goal. Hey, Lo, um, when you look at the fact that you traded all three of Marcus, uh, Rocco, Nico, guys who were basically playing the same spot, same position last year. Uh, do you feel like there's a void there? How does this team uh, fill it, both with the guys who are currently on the roster and you have two open roster spots? Yeah, well, it's something that you know we've talked about before is, look, and it wasn't the reason we did this trade, but we needed to consolidate our forward position. Um, all those guys, very, very good. But you know, as we talked about last year, it's challenging you know, from a playing standpoint, how you get guys that have similar skill sets, how you get them on the floor together. It's very, very tough. Um, so I think we we have enough because of the versatility. If you think about it, Kawhi's a big wing. PG's a big wing. P.J. Tucker's a big wing. James has great size. Kobe Brown, who you guys saw in an extended run, yes, they, we think has a very, very bright future. Um, and we'll assess it. Uh, I think your roster's, you know, never quite set until it is. Um, but we want to kind of see how the different players, how they fit together, what T. Lou's most comfortable with in terms of different, you know, four- and five-man combinations. Uh, and then from there, if we need to adjust and add or change, we'll, we'll, always, we'll always be active and looking for ways to get the team better. You mentioned earlier uh, that you wanted to get James in early so that guys, guys could get acclimated to the system and stuff like that. Is this a trade that you kind of had wished had happened earlier in the offseason, like into training camp where you could have phased it in a little bit quicker? 
Um, well, the thing is, trades can only happen when both sides want it. So, you know, the, in an ideal world, yeah, you'd love it to happen, you know, in the summer. But, you know, the life isn't ideal and, uh, and certainly the basketball world. So the timing just had to matter because the flip side is, hey, let's say there was no deal at all. Or let's say the deal was in February. Ultimately, at the end of the day, is you make the best of your circumstances. And I think we still have a really, really long runway. And it's, you know, fortunate in a sense that, you know, Tilu can have like a mini quote unquote training camp in that we have four days before our next game uh, after tonight's game. Um, Hello, over here. Hello. Hi. Hey, Miriam. Hey, How you doing? Good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. Um, so I sort of picking back, piggybacking off something you said, but um, sort of like with the rest narrative that's out there with, you know, Kawhi and PG and, and obviously Harden coming in here. Like, is this is this in, in the championship aspirations? Is 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 this group especially motivated? Do you think, or or hungry like hungry to prove something? Yeah, I mean, look, NBA players, let alone great players, are motivated every day. Um, I think the fact that we've fallen short of our goals and that there's a great investment from everyone, starting with Steve Ballmer, you know, to everyone in the organization, the coaching staff, and our best players. You can see it every day in terms of the work they put into it. And the unfortunate thing has, some, and these are no excuses, it's just the reality, injuries to our best players um, have contributed to us falling short of our goals. Our guys take tremendous pride in doing everything they can under their control to stay healthy and to be able to participate in as many games as possible. Um, because of a lot of different factors, I think our guys are extremely motivated and the investment in being a clipper um, is extremely high. Um, you, you, there could be many excuses for guys going in contract years. It, it's all about winning and winning for the clippers. And, you know, I see it, I hear it, both in group and one-on-one -on -one conversations. I know what the expectations are from both our players, from our coaching staff, and in terms of the, the process, the day-to-day -day of what they've put into it, you know, the group has done a really, really, really good job up to this point. Does that feel like a win in itself, just that, that desire to be a Clipper? Um, from I, where it look, used to be? Look, it's, I mean, if you put it in historical things, yeah, I mean, we, one of our goals was to make this a destination location. Um, I think this situation, to think about four first ballot Hall of Famers that are all from Los Angeles, that are all in the similar age range, to be able to do something for the city, and especially because when they were growing up, what the narrative was around the Clippers and what it is today, and the fact that they can have a huge, huge impact to continue to further the positive narr narrative of the Clippers um, could potentially be something really, really special and significant. You got time for one more. Lawrence, obviously, <clears throat> when you have a chance to get someone like James, you, you do it. Um, but, you know, you guys have historically the last couple of years just traded guys who have meant a lot to the culture of this team in the locker room, especially chemistry-wise. Does something like that matter? How much does that weigh on you when you have to trade guys who repeatedly have been good vets in the locker room, some wanted to retire here, stuff like that? Yeah, it means a lot. I mean, we do not underrate chemistry. We don't underrate character. Um, you know, trades have to be a two-way street. Uh, they have to make sense for the other side. The other side, if we value someone, they probably value the player. He's probably valued around the league. So it is, it's always extremely difficult to trade. And, yeah, like there have been people who have been very, very important, and we still stay in close ties with them. But ultimately, what you have to assess is what's best for the organization uh, and what's best to help us with our goal. And to have the opportunity to acquire, you know, one of the elite talents uh, in this league. Uh, and I think we focus on players, on what they, who are they in terms of what are their strengths. And if you optimize their strengths within the group, what does it look like? And I think acquiring James and also acquiring PJ, despite, you know, to your point, the, the great contributions those guys made, we felt as hurtful and tough as it is, it was, it was well worth the price we paid. No, I mean, nothing. Look, we knew going into the year, uh, I think even when we sat down before, that 
we want to get the team better. It's either internal development, but our, our job is to always position ourselves to give us a chance where we're a contender. James Harden, uh, look, he should have been an all-star last year, okay, but he's a 10-time all-star. He has an elite skill set, and all he cares about is one thing. He wants to win a championship for the L.A. Clippers. He wants to be part of something bigger than himself. He's had all the individual awards. He, he's about doing something really special. Thanks, Austin. Thank you, guys.